That is funny story. So as soon he stepped here, he was shocked. He said, what happened? Where is my head? Because he came here 20 years ago and he found a huge head on the ground, on a small pedestal on the ground. He took a picture to that head and when he went back home, he put the picture on his computer. He has a special uh, program for engineers uh, and he cut the, uh, the face in two half and he deleted the right half and COVID the left half flipped the or uh, how do you call it he flipped and put it together it gave him the same face okay that is impossible unless it was made by machine but with hand tool or carving you never create identical things with your hand okay so why he was shocked because the Egyptian administration decided to restore the statue and they took the head from the ground and put it on top of that statue there so that head one day used to be on the ground oh. yeah so they restored that's why you can see most of the statue is uh, modern restoration only the shoulders part of the hand and the other shoulder and the head but everything else is uh, cement or concrete okay. according to the writings this obelisk was made by ramses ii according to the writings which we don't trust much why we don't trust much? Because there are so many sites has the name Ramses II. But later we discover that there is a, an older name. And also I don't agree that the older name is the real pilgrim. It could be another thief. Okay, so they add their names above the old things. native information not in any egyptology book any <coughs> alternative book anything this is from my own observation that any site in ancient egypt even if it is in the middle of greenland surrounded by dry uh, environment nothing grows around <coughs> the ancient site why because i believe because the, the plants are daily exposed to that theming of energy which is good for a short time, but bad for a long time. Only one plant survives in this type of energy and actually feeds on that energy, that plant. I see that plant in every, surrounding every ancient site. What plant is that? What plant is that? That is a good question. <laughs> that is, we call it thorn plant. Yeah. You know the icon of Jesus when they, the one they put above Jesus' head? Okay. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Thorny plant, you find thorny plant in two places. Ancient sites and railways tracks. Why railways? Because of two reasons. Especially the, the old system of railways, they used to put broken pieces of granite on the uh, track. And the, the movement of the train all the time is creating also uh, magnetic charge and uh, uh, static electricity, which is something similar to what they used to produce from the, the temple. So I, my own story that according to the amount of the, the thorn tank, we can figure out the level of energy. Okay. When we see too much, and by the way, I, I in this business for 20 years, my first time here was 20 years ago, I saw the Egyptian Egyptian government destroying this like five or six times. They cut it completely, it grows again. Then cut it completely. So last time they cut all the thorny plant and they put plastic sheets and they put plenty of stone, it grows again. See? Through the plastic, there is plastic sheets underneath. Okay? So because the energy is very strong. Thank you.
Remember the scarab. Remember the scarab? The gift I gave you? Right? New beginning. I gave you one each. Which is like something precious. Don't lose it. I will keep reminding them of that gift. <laughs> so when we say scarab, and when we imagine life scarab, walking or crawling on the ground, from which side do you see the scarab? Top. The top, right? Yeah. So always the top. We don't expect to see the scarab from the underpilly side. Okay. So from the top, that is the usual side, usual information, usual atmosphere, usual relationships. But here they represent the scarab from the underpilly. Wow. So what does it mean? That we are seeing something supposed to be hidden. We are going to, but, but not us as visitors, us if we come as uh, students. Because the, what the, we call it temple nowadays, which is not correct, that is Greek title for the place. This is used to co be called Hout Netter. Hout means enclosure or house or big design of nature. What kind of nature? Philosophy of that nature and the science of that nature. So if we are at uh, Ra Temple, the philosophy of the sun. If we are Khonsu Temple, philosophy and science of the moon. Uh, here Hatur, the philosophy of resonance and sound, which recently we call it music, the power of music, healing music, that is came from this temple, resonant and sound waves. Okay, so education in ancient Egypt started through the temple. There was no schools in ancient Egypt. The school was inside the temple, the academy inside the temple, the university inside the temple, and also the temple was Hautnetter was a healing center. So it was both teaching and healing. That if we talk about big buildings like this, but small building will be more like healing. And the academy will be in another major uh, temple. So the, these students will learn much because this place will show them the secrets. This is the true underbelly of the scarab to be prepared for what we're going to see inside. Because what we'll see inside is very deep. What Australian? Ah, this is Australian. This is Egyptian. No, he's Australian. The dwarf. Nothing say Australian. No, he's Australian. Do you have one like this in Australia? So Egyptian. Yeah. Of course, there are uh, deep roots and connections. So this is Bess. B E S. Bes is always uh, connected with Hatur because Bes was this strange face, strange body, body of a dwarf, face as a mix of human and lion. Okay. Uh, this is the strange character was used as um, a guardian for babies, pregnant ladies, weak people and also was considered as the great musician. Remember the word open sesame? Okay, keep remembering this. Because <laughs> I was going to tell you the story now, but I prefer to keep it uh, to uh, Isis temple. Okay, because the open sesame is, is something true, and it is not just random word they say. No, it, there is a huge science behind that word open sesame. So he is one of these people who was dealing with open sesame. Okay. He's like a gatekeeper? Gatekeeper, uh, res uh, healer, great healer. Mm -hmm. And also that body, we call it the African uh, big me, especially Congo. Okay. So I didn't know about Australia, but I know about Congo more. And the, the, that type of panther, yeah. many people call it lion, no, it's a panther, because that is the lion, this is the, 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 the symbol of the panther from Congo also. Mm. And by the way, Anubis, the jackal, is a, com a perfect shape of a Congolian dog. So as if there was great... Of course, Congo is African country, Egypt is African. 
okay but it is not easy to understand how they used to uh, live together or like one big Kemet, one big Egypt one day I want you to realize something that this is his tongue his tongue is out and we saw that in Tutankhamun collection many creatures and anim animals <laughs> they showed the tongue out I think the tongue out is, is a primitive way or, or, or a, a way to show the uh, senses and as if like like that they are receiving um, like tasting the, the atmosphere or tasting something or maybe receiving some kind of waves or energy so that was like small wall and we can see this from the four sides we will talk more about this when we get further inside Same like uh, Luxor Temple, this area was a village one day and all the surrounding mud brick walls were part of big community and also like a huge wall surrounding the complex. Yes, but to keep the energy inside. Are you ready? When we get inside, Look up, up there at the ceiling. So I was right. This is different Johnny, right? <laughs> Ah, yes. Right? Yes. We will go this corner. Come close, come close. Yes. So this is the temple of Hat Her. Hat Her or Hat Hur. Hat Hur, which we call it in English, Hat Hur. Hat Hur. Hat enclosure. I want to show you the name. It's not written close. Okay, I will show you her name soon. But we talk about uh, a rectangular and Horus in the middle. So that is her name. So if we find a lady with two horns of a cow and the solar disk, that is Hatur. But sometimes she is Isis. How we know from the writings or if they add an extra symbol above the head, the chair of Isis, so she would be Isis. Like this one. This carving for Isis. Not Hatu. Mm. Okay? And that carving too for Isis. Not Hatu. Why Isis and Hatu are connected? Because Isis, when she delivered Horus, she born Horus. She was afraid that his uncle Set may keep doing wrong things and kill him like his father. So she left Horus with Hatur to raise him and to protect him. 
and that is the meaning of her name, the shelter of Horus, the protection of Horus. But we can explain this name in, in a deep way, the, uh, the, the base or the foundation or the protection of the male power. So Hatur is the, the female container, containing what? Containing the male power. Something like the, the, the lady with the, the womb and the boy is inside. That, that, that's why she is the only knitter from ancient Egypt doesn't have T at the end. So we have, I said, Sekhmet, Pastet, uh, Amunet, uh, Eset, Nebhet, Nut, uh, Tifnut. All of them must have T. That is the only one without T because she is not pure uh, feminine. He is feminine with masculine energy. Okay? And also, Set is the only male nature who has T at the end of his name. Set, the one who killed his brother, Osiris. All the other natives, Horus, Ozir, Ra, Amun, different uh, ends, but no T. The only one has T in his name is Set. Okay? Because Set includes feminine power in his uh, 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 power. Okay, do you know what? What is uh, his feminine power? Can you guess? Anger. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, al <laughs> he's always angry. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, don't tell my wife. <laughs> so, many people explain these writings as uh, stars and uh, the, uh, like, uh, galaxies, I agree with them 100%. And maybe I add more, I say this is the whole universe. We are looking to one big map for the universe. We are here on the left edge of the universe. You can call it west or east, okay, I'm not sure, but let's call it the left side, and there we're going to see the right side. What is the left side talking about? This is Newt again, the lady of the sky. Newt and her body occupies all the way to the other side. So note she is about to swallow the sun disk, so that is the moment of sunset. And the uh, solar disk will cross all the way inside her body, going to uh, the womb, and she will give birth to the sun again. Can you see it? Yeah. And the rays of the sun will give birth to Hatur. So from this scene, we know who is Hatur now. So Hatur is the, the beam of the sun. But from other uh, symbols, we know she is the nice beam of the sun. So the energy we just felt, that is not Hatur. That is Sekhmet. Hatur, the nice beam of the morning. Like 8, 9, 10 in the morning. But the, the, the strong uh, beam with the, with the very... Uh, like, a, how do you call it, uh, uh, burning our skin, that is segment. And then segment presence will be more clear next month and the month in July and August. That is very clear segment. This one is unique, it was not uh, shown in any other location. Okay, so if you, it will be exactly in front of my head now, you can see at that uh, separation on the ceiling, can you see it? Yeah. To the right side, make it to the snake. Make a snake on the left side, and that man without legs. It is the body of a snake. If you don't see it, come to me here. Have you seen it? Yeah. See you, Saba? Yeah. Valerie, can you see it? Very good. Okay. So this is very strange. As if the, uh, they try to say that this is, a, is a, a, a way to show us that this person was coming from a spiritual dimension to physical dimension. Okay? The same like the, the story of the, the genie of the lamb. Okay? So, he is getting materialized. Okay? And a few maybe seconds later will get legs and feet. Hey, ah. Maybe some emotion. Okay. Okay. 
Can you see it after? Yeah, I can. I can see it. Uh, بعتوا بعتوا لي صار الدفعة بتاع الزيارة دي بتاع زيارة يوم 14 بتاع الهرم ال yes. And we can see the other six zodiacs, oh, yeah. including mine. Mine is Libra. Can you see it here? That uh, circle, the scale exactly. Okay, yes. Where's cancer? Where's the cancer? Cancer there, here. Can you see it? Uh -huh. So here we can see the, again, newt is about to swallow the solar disk and will give birth to a scarab. So, yeah, so when I am saying new beginning, I'm not imagining, I'm not <laughs> deceiving you. Here it is, this is my evidence. So the scarab is the first cycle of the sun and represents new beginning. Don't forget that. <laughs> this place, we call it Hatur Temple, Dandara city. So I taught you to know the uh, English name, the Arabic name. What about the ancient Egyptian name? That is very unique name and it hides so many uh, deep information. I want you to come this way. You will be surpri surprised to know that and on, on, not only you, also Egyptologists, many of them, they don't know that information, that everything is double in ancient Egypt. When I say everything, everything. Okay? But if you, if you read or you follow some of my videos, and I want you really to come forward, you will love this information. We have uh, Isis Osiris. We have uh, a moon and uh, mood, okay, uh, masculine, feminine. So what about Ra? Do we have a female Ra or companion for Ra? Most of the people will not answer that question. They don't know. Oh, no. We have Ra'it, the female Ra. Do we have female atom? Yes, atomic. Amun, Amunet. So everything, even Horus. I will show you, I believe it is here, Horet. So we have Hor, Horet. Okay, that's why we must have Hatur, Hat Horet. Okay, everything must be double in Egypt. Masculine, feminine. Masculine, feminine. Yin, Yang. Positive, negative. And positive, negative here doesn't necessarily mean good and bad. No, that is the current like electric current, okay? What about the name of this place? Also, the name of this place is serving the same idea. We have own, remember own? Own, city, own, exactly. This is Onet. So that, that area called Onet. This is the female Heliopolis. And what is Heliopolis? The city of the sun in Greek language, okay? But the Arabs gave it great name. They call it the Eye of the Sun. So the Arabic name for the city, Ain Shams, Ain, Eye, or center. Shams, Sun. So I think the Arabs gave it better name, better meaning than the, uh, the Greeks. So it's not just the city of the sun. It is the, the where they teach the philosophy or the core of the philosophy of the sun. But here on it, yes, related to the sun, but it doesn't serve the same exactly uh, technique. They serve this giant obelisk technique. This is what we call it the Ben Ben. The Ben Ben is a giant obelisk. And we have one of the stories of creation. It says, when the Benuber 
that is the name of the bird, Binub, we think it's like Phoenix, goes inside the bin bin, the activation will start happening. This is like the, the, the story how they, the, the first step of creation of, of human, no, of Earth, no, our galaxy, no, of the whole universe. Okay? That Ben Ben, so here we are talking about not only healing, not only uh, uh, having a, like a good mood or like, uh, like healing center, no, also they teach here so many important information connected with the uh, stories of creation. And that's why what we are going to see later, what they call it the Dandara light pulse, they are not light pulse. They are the two major elements or the two basic elements of the universe before creation. So when we go there, because I cannot guide you because we big number, so you will go uh, in small groups. When you go to the far end, to the right side, you will see two of them and they don't touch each other. They are about to touch, okay? And the, under the first one, some figures, under the second one, some figures. And on the left wall, it become one. So the two were combined together, become one, one. And all the symbols underneath become one plus one extra. Doesn't exist in any of the two. Because when you put two substances together, it creates number three. So that, that well, there is one more. So this is onet. Uh, sorry, right of onet. This is moot, mother. This is wadjet, protection, the cobra. This is the regular shape of the scarab from the back side. And they say the scarab could represent your brain, two sides and front, okay? I agree with this is also maybe something, but we need so many uh, volunteer experts in different type of science to come and study all of these things to tell us what is happening here, okay? This is the symbol Ra, or the title Ra, that is the, the, the sun. This is the symbol <coughs> city. Symbol city. I saw uh, someone here told me, I think Yuliza, about the, uh, the, the cross of colors. No, no, it was, yes, it was you. Yes, exactly, here it is. Come closer. Maybe not exactly the same, but still close. This symbol was given to ancient, so when they wrote Kemet, they put the symbol next to Kemet. Guess what, when they wrote Papillon, they don't give it that symbol. When they wrote any other country, they don't give it, they give it the symbol mountain. Okay, like they wanted to say primitive, savages, uh, less civilization. And the funny thing that the Persians, when they conquered many countries and they made the list, they did the same. They give themselves mountain shape and all the other countries except Egypt, they give it that symbol. So the Persians themselves admit the same story like the ancient Egyptians. They found that there is another design under this block, that block from the ground, from the floor. So as if there was an older temple inside under this temple. But that is not correct. It is not a whole temple. Slices of pillars were used as foundation to the place. Because the ancient Egyptians, when they found that there are some buildings in a very bad condition, maybe because of the cataclysm, because of the solar flare, and they couldn't reconstruct this building, they cut it and they use it as foundation under their uh, uh, buildings to bring a positive energy to the place. Many of the Arab uh, people I think that tradition is stopped now, but they used to put uh, money, a uh, small bag, leather bag of money, when they uh, do the foundation and pour the, uh, the concrete in order to bring... Uh, eh? You see, the same thing. So this is as a way to bring richness, prosperity, so that is similar, but to bring positive energy to the side. But it's not full, right? No, not full, just the slides. Would be more exciting if there No, I, look, I don't much, I don't agree much about the whole temple and this, but, but sites, yes, like all the sites, caves, yes, tunnels, but not big construction. 
Okay. But the strings may be. <laughs> yes, of granite, like this table. We are missing that bark with that shrine or small shrine on top of it. So that's supposed to be here in the middle. Okay. That bark used to have inside the statue of Hatur. And the statue, I call it the pottery of Hatur. Maybe yes, in, in the shape of Hatur, but that is what the pottery. And Hatur, in later stories, they say she was married to Horus. So how come Horus was like a son to Hatur? How come Horus married Hatur? That, we will talk about it when we talk about the Merkaba, my own story of the Merkaba, that if we talk about the, the bodies, you were born before me, I was born before somebody else. So our bodies, different age. But our souls, the same age. Your soul could be 10,000 years old, mine the same. So all the souls are the same age because, and they all were in one place. So that is the same. Our soul, Hatur soul are the same. So if we skip the, the, uh, the story of their physical body, then it makes sense that they got married. But the word got married here, it's a, a, a very primitive or very uh, simple way to talk about how they get united and trying to change the energy of this place and Itfu. So we have Dandara here north of Luxor, Itfu city south of Luxor. Itfu is the city of Horus, very masculine power, high level. So that's why. You can feel that the people are a little bit aggressive. The horse, the carriage riders, the vendors, most of the people, they, they behave in a very masculine uh, way. Here, Dandara, very feminine way. So remember when I said that we need the palace. Very this side, no. Very that side, no. So they used to take the statue of Hatur to Itfu city to balance the energy. And they bring the statue of Horus to here to balance the energy. Look. This, who is she? Look to the, uh, here, the head. This is Hatur. So that is the sacred part of Hatur. But that is the sacred part of Horus. You see? The same thing here. Horus, Hatur. So, Hatur from here will visit Edfu. Horus from Edfu will come here. And both will do together the same trip twice. Okay? So as if four times a year. Two individuals and two together. Okay? This is the way to balance that energy. The nation of Horus, the, the two wings, and Ra. Okay? This is a very important symbol for protection. So you receive, for, that's why they put it above the, the door jams or the, the inner side of the door. So when you cross, you will receive that kind of protection. The sun itself and the two wings of Horus. خلاص كده في حد تحت لسه في حد تحت ننزل ننزل so we have three uh, crypts two underneath and one up there so let's split on three groups so I want ten people ten ten this way
with the snake feet, moisture, melt a little bit. So this is happening because of too many feet. Three feet in the sweat from the feet? Ah, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Somebody, this? Mm -hmm. Because look, where we are walking, we are exactly walking the same way. Yeah. The same. Okay. it many times, but now the first time to see Geb. Geb is Earth in a very strange yoga position. <laughs> and the only nation, the only nation says Father Earth is ancient Egypt, not Mother Earth. Wow. Geb is a, is a male. She's a female, so sky is female, but Earth is male. Come close, come inside. Is that the Ark of the Covenant? That's the Ark of the Covenant? It looks like it. It's a similar, yes. Yeah. And wait until you hear the story. Very, very interesting. It's like urine. It smells like urine. Like human urine. Urine? A little bit, yeah. Did someone did something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there was a Come inside, come inside, squeeze. <laughs> this is the whole of Osiris and it shows the story of resurrection. So if you want to be resurrected, listen to me carefully. Okay. We start from here. Then I went to empty, empty. <laughs> okay, this is Isis, Horus, and maybe Nephthys. And this is the dead body of Osiris in his shrine or catalyst. Horus is feeding him with the three famous Egyptian symbols, the was scepter, that is the was scepter, and the jet pillar and the ankh. Okay, and under the bed, all the symbols of reality in ancient Egypt because Uzir was the eternal ruler of ancient Egypt. Okay, you see Horus here on top of that shrine. Now we come to this. This is a frog, later called Hekat or Hekat, means um, right. Right things, or uh, how do you call it? Yes, it is, it is right. Yes, okay. Like my right, your rights, like rights. Okay, because he had the right to be alive. So we can see, we can see the dead body of Osiris with Horus, the falcon. But she is Isis now, is flying above his penis. Why? Because she is, when he was killed, she was not pregnant yet. She became pregnant from his dead body. Okay? And in some stories, they say she made an artificial penis from wheat. That's why <laughs> gluten free is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and she became pregnant and she delivered Horus. So how come we see Horus here? Horus is supposed to be not born yet, but we talk about now the dimension of souls. We're not talking about the physical dimension. Okay, we see these four examples. We call them the canopic jars to keep the organs of the abdomen, stomach, lungs, intestines, liver, 
after they do mummification. So now, Uzir is officially dead. But Uzir here had the face of the falcon and was erected Banus also. Why erected Banus? It's a way to say that Horus is truly the son of Uzir because this is not fake because he still has that effect. His, his body is still having like uh, sexual feelings. So he truly had sex with Isis. So Horus is the legitimate son of Uzir. Because so many people can, may suspect, they say, how come he was dead before she was pregnant? And, and this is the complete form, dead or being mummified by Anubis. Anubis is the one who's supposed to do the mummy, even in real life. So how come, how we can fit that story? The priest will have a mask for Anubis for a short time. Leather mask. We found many of these leather masks. Okay? And this is the last step of the first life of Uzir. Complete mummy. And he is, is supposed to be buried, or this is the end of his first life. Okay? Now we come to chapter 2. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Chapter 2, we see the same mummy, but again with erected penis. Now, why this? There is no sexual need here. So what, what is the sign? Rigamortis. Huh? <laughs> what is Rigamortis? When you die, you guys. Uh, no, because he is already dead here without... Uh, he's waking up. Yeah. Added huh? after he's waking up. Waking up? Yes. Uh, how? Morning one and morning. <laughs> ah, yes, true. It took me seven years to figure out this. <laughs> but, okay, so yes, men have three erections during the night. One right after sleep, one we call it in, in deep sleep, and one right before uh, wake up. Okay? <laughs> so, I'm talking about the normal. <laughs> So this is the sign that he is, he is, he is uh, about to wake up. And now you can see he is awake and he started to say, ah, oh, like this thing, okay? And, and they started to do different ceremonies now. And here he is using the power of the papyrus plant and the lotus flower to rise. His wife with her wings and she was the great magician is helping him to rise. And now we see he's ab about to rise. He is not 100% yet. And that is the final scene. And instead of seeing Osiris, we see the jet pillar, the symbol of Osir or Osiris, in uh, upright position. So this is the symbol of what we can call it the Egyptian Christmas. This is the new beginning of Osiris, but not in the first life, in the second life. So he became the lord of the Duat land, the, the lord of the afterlife. So that is the story of Uzir, how he died and how he was resurrected. Aries, Aries, okay. But that, so what is in the middle, the, the, the center is different galaxies and constellations like we have, this is called Taurit, Taurit is Draco. Uh, the Pleiades, uh, this is Orion, okay, uh, this is the big bear here, so that's, so the middle or the, the center is many galaxies, the second layer, the zodiac, the third layer, unknown galaxies, this layer can here with, with all the stars, uh, no, no, sorry, here, and then the fourth layer, so the fourth layer is the end of universe, and those are kind of great powers supporting the universe or holding the universe together. Okay, but something very strange. We see two males, two Horus, and one Hathor or Isis. So two males, one female. Two males, one female. Okay, is that, is that, is that a way to say that uh, ladies can like carry? More than men? That, that, yeah, I see you're a big fan of these stories. Huh? <laughs> Maybe that is also a way to say that uh, as a man, uh, we have X and Y. Okay? So two men means one man, uh, one man and one girl, one lady, right? 
one X, one X. Yes, pure man, pure woman, and uh, the uh, the lady only is pure feminine energy. So I see it like something like this. They are trying to talk about the major. It is not about being masculine, feminine. It's about two, uh, two halves. Like the energy was one. The the the. <coughs> The measure of the main element of the universe was one energy and split to two. So all our missions and everything in our life is based on how to put these two together to create one. Okay? I think that, that is the, the most difficult thing we are trying to do. And if we do that in any scale, like if from the, the scale of like your job, your teaching, your uh, 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 happiness, enjoying uh, the beach, anything, you always think of two halves, okay, and you put it together to create one, and when you reach that one, it will be the perfect example, okay? So this is the, our universe, and maybe they wanted to tell us that there are more uh, or, or deeper dimensions. It is not just one, because, and that is what I learned it from Arthur, so I appreciate this. Don't see it as 2D. See it as 3D, and 3D and maybe moving also with motion. Okay, so when, when I started to see it as 3D, so I can see deeper layers and going up. Okay, uh, so each symbol here can have like one million symbols behind, but we see the front one only because it is 2D. But if we stretch, we see the rest of them. Pandora and other big temples. They were serving as academy and uh, healing center. Something like what we do nowadays. All the medicine schools are connected with a hospital. So they study here and they practice there. Okay.